Hi everyone, this is Toby from Wild Pup Adventures. I have three dogs with me here at the river and today we're gonna teach you all kinds of exercises so you can get your dog to be an awesome, confident swimmer. Now some dogs, as we all know, they just jump in the water, comes naturally to them, they know exactly what they're doing and they're fine. Other dogs have a fear of water or getting into water and you just have to give them lots of positive exposures so that they feel more confident and comfortable doing that. And others just need to learn the skill or a combination, of course. So I hope you have fun with these activities and I know your dog will. <laughs> I want to add in here, some dogs are just simply freezing cold getting into the water. So if your dog has a thin coat or you can't figure any other reason why they might not like it, make sure they have a great neoprene base layer for hunting or sporting dogs and make sure that they feel comfortable. I'm sure it'll make a world of difference. I want to introduce you to the three dogs we're going to work with today. This is Finn, who's going to learn to swim. This is Coco, who's going to help him and have a great time. And here's Raven, the expert. I definitely think it's worth noting here that I've been working with Finn on adventures for a number of months now and he has never gone swimming. So this is his chance. So almost no matter what the skill is, I often encourage people to bring a dog or dogs um, that can help the dog that's learning um, in the proper way and to bring the proper energy of influence to the situation and that's why I brought Coco. I knew that she would be the perfect type of dog, the perfect energy, uh, the perfect influence for Finn who is a sensitive guy um, and I knew that pairing them together to do this would um, only be beneficial for Finn. Here's some quick information about what's in this video and how to work through it. I have maybe 10, 11 exercises for you to practice with your dog. The way you should work through uh, this lesson is to do one at a time and work up. If your dog is um, more advanced and maybe they start at number five, awesome. Just focus from five, six, seven on up. Also, keep in mind, some dogs may work on numbers one through three for the next three months, and others might be able to do all of the steps in a weekend. It really depends on your dog. It's really important to make sure your dog is moving at the appropriate pace. So always tailor each lesson and each exposure to your dog, just like any good educator would. So we'll start off with the very most important thing. Number one tip is that you set the tone for their experiences. Your excitement, your enthusiasm, your positivity, feeling that you have confidence in them and expressing that through your body language and through the tone of your voice and everything else, right Coco? Is going to get the dog to feel good about themselves and be excited and not have the fear of what they're doing. Let's get started with some experiential activities. This is for dogs who have never gone swimming before or they're fearful in some way and they're really just starting out. All right, so the first activity is just the water is fun toss. Simple as that. We just want them to feel that water is fun. Water is an awesome place to hang out and play and be with your friends, and that's it. You just toss it maybe a little deeper each time. Have them play with their friends in the shallow water, maybe play tug and that sort of thing. Or just toss objects in really, really shallow water. They just gain confidence and comfortability playing in the water, that's it. If you have a dog that doesn't like to fetch, is really not motivated to do that, I would suggest at this point, you should just walk in the water with them, call them, splash in the water, call their name, make it just a fun place to hang out with you. <laughs> I also encourage you to take your dog to do more fun, laid back activities that involve water, but where they don't feel pressured to swim in the water. So maybe stream walking, creek walking, that sort of a thing. They love that. And just have them every now and then go a little deeper, a little deeper to fetch some things, give them little exposures and just make it a fun thing to be around the water. Before we move on with the other activities, now is a good time for you to really figure out why your dog doesn't like the water. For dogs that are scared, you just wanna give them really positive experiences and build their confidence. For dogs that need to learn the skill, you wanna focus on that, just like how do you swim? And depending on what their issue, you need to find out why so that you can resolve it. 
Right, Finn? Why don't you like the water, honey? So for Finn, it seems like he really loves the idea of going in the water, but he just won't do it. He's scared for some reason. And it could be he's had some bad experiences in the past, or he just has never had enough experiences to really feel confident. But either way, we need to build up his confidence. We're first gonna look at a clip of Finn going into the water and doing his classic thing of not wanting to go any deeper. Go get it. Maybe this looks okay. familiar and this is what your dog does. But don't worry one bit about Finn because by the end of this video, he's gonna be swimming all by himself. Right, Finn? All right, so it's time to take it up a notch. Now, we want the toss game or the game where you're in the water making it fun for them to go a little further and a little further and a little further. So you're gonna start tossing the stick just a tiny bit more, a tiny bit more. You already know the depth that your dog is kind of stopping at. And so you wanna just push it like an inch or two inches, three inches farther than that and have them push themselves a little farther each time and keep extending that distance further and further out. So I really suggest you going in the water with your dog. That helps them to feel like this is a shared activity. You're not just having them do it. You're not just expecting them to go by themselves. They feel a lot more confident and happy when you share the activity with them. Throughout the video, you can see that I'm wearing uh, special neoprene pants and shoes uh, made for water sports to keep me warm in the water. And that really helps when you're trying to teach your dog how to swim so that you feel totally comfortable and warm enough um, to really be in there, really give it the time that it needs, and to be patient with your dog as they're learning. Next activity is holding the dog in the water and supporting them as they practice their strokes. This is especially good for dogs who probably don't know how to swim yet. They need to learn how to use especially their back legs. Often dogs will just go like this with their front legs and they don't understand or realize they have to use their back legs too. So this exercise helps them to learn that. All right, so I'm in the water with Ben. And I'm, you can see he's kind of doing a back sink. So I'm gonna hold up his back, back half and have him practice a little bit. Good boy. I can hold him here or on the side. He's a big guy, so I can hold him under his belly. Or this life jacket is great. It allows me to hold the back of him. Good boy. So you see how he's practicing with his legs right now, where before he used to only swim with his front arms, and he would go like this. Good boy, good boy. He would just go like this and sink. So doing that a bunch of times helps him to get the body awareness and get the, the muscle memory of how to swim properly using his front and back legs together. I'll use something that he wants and get him into the water so then I can give him support and help him learn his strokes, especially for his back legs. You're good. Come on. You're a good boy. Good boy. So I can hold him under his uh, abdomen and make sure that I hold up his hips so that he's practicing his back leg stroke. Good boy, good boy. So as I'm experimenting with Finn and trying to figure out what works for him, what's gonna get him to swim, what's gonna get him to get out there on his own, I'm realizing it's really, now that he knows his strokes and we've practiced them doing all these activities many times, it's that he pauses. He just pauses right at the moment where he can't touch, he pauses and he needs that extra push. So what I'm trying to do with him is walk out with him, hold him and support him with his life jacket and get him to take that step with some support less and less and less every single time. Next tip is to get a teeny tiny flotation device made for children. 
and put it under the chest of your dog to give them a little extra support. If they're not wearing a life jacket or something that gives them some extra buoyancy, get a flotation device of some sort to especially help their back legs to stay up and you may position it under their belly. Yes, we're gonna play in just a minute, Coco. <laughs> So have that under their belly while they practice doing the strokes and that will help them to learn to use their back legs. Of course, this can only be done when they're stationary in the water and you're holding them while they practice their strokes. Otherwise, it won't stay put. All right, the next activity is to do the shore paddle. So you just bring your dog out into the water and then let them paddle to shore, simple as that. Do that a bunch of times and go out further and further so that they have to swim a farther distance themselves. First, hold them for a few seconds out in the water to practice their strokes and then release them to shore. I'm gonna hold Finn's life jacket because that makes it super easy to support his abdomen and hips or I could hold his hips and have him practice with his back legs. Good boy. And then I just release him and let him go to shore. Then do the more challenging version. Have them swim from shore out into the water. So at this point, your dog's skills have probably improved and we're at the point where they should be able to go from where they can stand in the water to where they need to swim, but that is a scary edge. And that's where they just need a tiny bit of support. You standing next to them, holding their harness and giving them a little lift off that edge will be exactly what they need. And here's an example of me doing that with Finn. Go Finn, go. Go Finn, go. So let's see. Go Finn, go. Go Finn, go. You got it. Go Finn, go. Oh, look, look, look. Oh my God, yeah, Finn. Yeah, Finn. Oh my gosh, you did it. You go and go. Go and go. You good boy. You good boy. You did it all by yourself. Yeah, good boy. Okay, so that, that right there was like a turning point for him. He just did it without me even touching his life jacket, which is amazing. And from now on, I feel like he's likely to have that much more support and that much more confidence. Well, if Coco didn't get the stick first. <laughs> We will keep trying. Let's see here. Go Finn, go. 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 He still wants me to be near him. Go Finn, go. Good boy, good boy. Go Finn, go. Yeah, good boy, good boy. Good job, Finn. Good boy, good boy. All right. Okay, so he's taking the next step. He still wants me to kind of get in the water with him, but he's able to jump off that ledge himself. Go Finn, go. Go Finn, go. Go Finn, go. Go Finn, go. Get it. Go Finn, go. Go. Yeah. He used to never do that himself. Never, ever, ever. Amazing, good boy. So here I'm going to give him just a slight bit of support to get his stick, but not too much. See, just a little bit and I'm going to ha have him start practicing his strokes. Good, good, good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And then he does the rest on his own and I take him out farther and farther and I use um, a lot of enthusiasm in my voice. So I've been saying, go Finn, go. Go Finn, go. Good boy. Go Finn, go. Go Finn, go. And as I say, go Finn, go. And I use that as like the command that is paired with me supporting him. Go Finn, go! Go Finn, go! He's starting to do it more and more with just the command. Good boy! Good boy! Go Finn, go! Good boy! Good boy! And he's getting more and more confident now to the point where, as you saw just now, I hardly had to even give him too much support. Okay, the next exercise is for the dog to choose to swim to something in the water. So you go out far, maybe you have a lick of peanut butter or you have their squeaky toy or you have the stick and they have to take the initiative to swim to you. This is slightly different than what we've been doing thus far because you're not throwing an object, you're just holding it. So basically it's taking down the intensity that drives a dog to do something. And so you're seeing if you can get them to come out for the sheer enjoyment of swimming just by itself. And to get a little something, but it's not as exciting as if you would throw it. 
So here's an example of having the resource and getting the dog to swim to you. Here, here. So you go out deep enough that they'll have to swim. Come on, come on, even though it's scary. Yeah, good job, guys, good job. Yeah, Finn. Yeah, Coco. Good job, guys. Good job, good job. So you could see they both took the initiative and they both went into a depth of water where they were required to actually do their strokes. <laughs> So that was also a great example of peer pressure, how peer pressure totally works for dogs when they're learning new skills. All right. Okay, so he's taking the next step. He still wants me to kind of get in the water with him, but he's able to jump off that ledge himself. Go, Finn, go. Go, Finn, go. Go, Finn, go. Go, Finn, go. Get it. Go, Finn, go. Go. Yeah. He used to never do that himself. Never, ever, ever. Amazing. Good boy. All right. The next exercise is to swim to mom and dad. So if you have a partner that you can work with, awesome. If you can bring a friend, awesome. Have the primary person in the dog's life be the one that they're going to swim to. So the other person holds the dog and the parent um, or family member of the dog stays maybe five, 10 feet away and you get the dog to swim, not to shore, but to the parent. And so that takes a little extra coaxing. Maybe the parent will hold the toy. Um, and so the two people will parallel to the shore in the water. Into the water and then swim to shore. That helps them build even more confidence. Yes, Finn. Yes, go get it. <laughs> so that's a So I want to add a little footnote here. Some dogs are really hardy and really not sensitive and to toss them in the water, they're going to be fine with that and they'll learn to swim and they'll be fine. But other dogs, a lot of dogs are sensitive. So we really have to make the call based on our individual dog. And with that, we're going to end this video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Wildpupadventure.com. Good job, Finn.